Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. In this one I will try to explain you how to create a bootable USB drive for Windows 10 installation directly from macOS. In previous videos I covered how to install Windows on your Mac without using Bootcamp Assistant but never really touched on the subject of creating this installation media directly from macOS. I saw in the comments there was quite the ask for it so that's why I decided to create this video. Of course, you can also use this method to create a bootable USB drive for installation on a regular PC if no Windows PC is nearby or available. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that I also have a blog, jensd.be, and you can find all the information that I will share in this video and more in detail. So, if you plan to go through this process yourself, I really recommend you to have a look there. We need to start by downloading the ISO file with the Windows 10 installation. This can be done directly from Microsoft's website, for which you can find a link in the description. Select Windows 10, which is the only option available, and confirm. In the next screen, choose the desired language and confirm again. Now choose the 64-bit download, accept and wait for the download to complete. After the download will be completed, we will need to prepare our USB drive. 8GB is the minimum size required. macOS supports only XFAT and FAT32 as file systems that are compatible with Windows. XFAT supports large files but causes issues to boot from on a lot of machines. FAT32 on the other hand works fine for booting, so that's what we will choose. But FAT32 has a file size limit of 4GB. This will cause us extra work later on in the video. Now that the ISO is downloaded, we can mount it by double-clicking on it. Having a look at the contents, we can see that one file, install.wim, in the sources folder on the ISO is larger than 4GB. This is exactly the reason why additional steps will be required, which I mentioned a bit earlier. Let's first prepare the USB drive. Insert it if you haven't done so, and start disk utility. In disk utility, make sure you select to show all devices. Then select the USB drive on the left side and click Erase. Give the drive a name. I chose WinUSB. Select MS-DOS FAT as file system and make sure to select Master Boot Record as the partition scheme. Click Erase and wait for Disk Utility to do as we selected. If all goes well, the drive will be mounted right away with the name you gave it. All we need to do now is to copy all files from the ISO to the USB drive. We can open the USB drive and the mounted ISO side by side to easily copy files. As you can see, we cannot simply copy all files at once since we have that one large file in the sources folder. So let's start by copying all files and folders except for sources. Once this is done, we can create a new folder in the USB drive and name it Sources. Then copy all the files from Sources and ISO to it except for install.wim. We will take care of that one large file in the next steps. At this point, we have the USB drive with all the files, except for that single large file install.wim. To be able to also copy this to the USB drive, we will need to split it. And in order to do so in a file format that is usable by the Windows installer, we can use wimlib. Wimlib comes with some tools to work with wim files, as the name inclines, which will allow us to split it as well. The easiest way to get wimlib installed on your Mac is with the Homebrew Package Manager. So, first we need to install that. Start by going to the website of Brew or Homebrew, the link is in the description as well. There you can simply copy the command to install Brew. Open up a terminal window. Paste the command and press enter to execute. The pasted script will do all the rest for you and download and install the necessary files.
Once Homebrew is installed, we can use it to install WIMLib. Next step is to use the install tools to split the large install.wim file and copy it to the USB drive. Let's first have a look at the names of our volumes that are mounted. We need to use these exactly when constructing the command to execute. The command itself is wimlib-imagex and will tell it that we want to split the source file install.wim on our ISO under sources. Next argument is the destination, which is on winusb slash sources. Last on that line is the maximum size, which we put as 4000. Once we execute the command, we can see that we will end up with two files as expected. This takes some time, but as a result, we can see that we have now two files under 4GB, which perfectly fit on our USB drive. In case you want to use the created USB drive to boot and install on a regular PC, you are done here and you can proceed with booting from it. If you want to use this on the other hand to install Windows on your Mac, it's also good to download the required drivers ahead of time. As I did from Windows in a previous video, I will use Brigadier for this. Open up the GitHub page for Brigadier, you can again find the link in the description, and then once you are there, download the code as zip. Again, open up a terminal window and navigate to Downloads Brigadier Master and simply execute Brigadier with dot slash Brigadier. As you can see in the output, the script automatically detects the model which you are executing this on. Obviously, if you need this for another type of Mac, you can pass the model as an argument on a command line. When Brigadier is done downloading, you can find a new folder under Brigadier Master, which contains a DMG file with the necessary drivers for the model found or selected. To have easy access to it after installing Windows, create a new folder on the USB drive and copy the contents of the downloaded DMG file to it. Once you went through the install on your Mac, you can then simply launch setup.exe to install at least the base drivers to get to going. We're done with the creation, so let's test if this USB drive works. For installation on a Mac, you can hold down the ALT key during boot time, Then select the USB drive to boot from it. On a regular PC, in most cases there is an option in the BIOS to display a boot menu, or you can change the boot order to boot from USB first. As you can see, it took a bit more effort to create a bootable USB drive for macOS, but still it's not the most complicated thing. Thanks a lot for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please put a thumbs up. If you like this and similar content, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel for more of the same. I really hope to see you back here soon.